We're here at Arrow 2018. Thought we'd do our race around. It may not be quite such a race here because we've got a different situation. Inside the big halls of Arrow, there are seven of these. We're not going to hit them all on this trip, but we're going to hit a few. Let's start off here with the CT from the new company, Flight Design General Aviation. They're now the manufacturer of both the CT series and of the rotor box gyrocopter. Up ahead is the Breezer aircraft. These fellows always have some of the most interesting paint jobs as you see on their aircraft here. They always have a nice display. Sometimes they're highlighted in the art gallery like they were a couple of years ago. Every place you look here at Aero there are gyroplanes it seems and we've got some here from a different company. In various forms and you can see that they've got the versions that are enclosed and wide open aircraft. Back here on the right, we're looking at another very interesting aircraft called Terragon. This is a retractable aircraft with an in-flight adjustable prop, and so they're not available in the United States in this configuration, only by kit if they were to come in, but they sure are handsome airplanes. On the other side here, we have the SD-2 the brand new offering from SD planes. That's their first two-seater we just went by there. Uh, so on the right here is an aircraft that looks a lot like the old MD-3 Ryder that passed uh, muster in the United States as an LSA. Now it's the Skyper GT-9. I don't know if they're the same airplane, but they sure look similar. And ahead on the left here, we've seen the SD-4 from, uh, from Viper, another handsome airplane, also finding a little bit of traction in the USA. Also, a lot of places you look, you see weight shift, trikes. And here's a company that we know very well, but we've not seen so often in the United States anymore. This is Air Creation. And back there behind these couple of two-seaters is their new little single-seater that they've got. Uses some welded steel construction, which this company adopted a few years ago. Coming up next on the uh, left here is an aircraft that we looked at. There'll be a full interview with this one. It looks a lot like the uh, Zenith series aircraft, but there's a number of changes to it, one of which you can see is folding wings and its own custom trailer. But what really distinguishes this aircraft is its hand controls for handicapped pilots. It's created by a handicapped pilot himself, so it makes a lot of sense. Here's one we did not get too much of a chance to look at yet. Very interesting. Looks like it's all carbon fiber. It's actually a metal airplane but it has a, some interesting shapes to it. A little bit of a BD-4 look to it, but it's much smoother than some of those. And as we come around the corner here, a whole series of airplanes using the Oratex fabric. This is the fabric that already has colors in it, and so you don't have to do any painting, and that should be a lot easier for some folks in the kit enterprise. When you get to something like this handsome Kristen Eagle here, there's a lot of decals on there. That's not painted on, those are decals. And that's a way to give it some real spark, albeit that's gonna take you some extra time over just a conventional Oratex fabric covering. These are used on a lot of different airplanes. As you can see, they've got a whole selection of them in here in their booth. So as we come down the various halls, uh, uh, aisleways here at Aero, you just see one airplane after another that we don't see, but one that we don't see in the United States yet, although it'll be coming because there's already a U.S. distributor arranged, is this handsome all-black FX-1 from Innova, Innova Aviation, an Italian company that's resuscitating the Jet Fox 97 from earlier years. Okay, now we're looking at the Ecolot company, and this is the Junior. Now, we don't see the Junior. We have seen it in the United States, but uh, the one that they're primarily marketing now is the Topaz, and there's a whole new version of it. We did a video on that in Florida at Sun and Fun about that handsome aircraft. Okay, here's the Texan from Fly Synthesis. They've had this design out for quite a while, a handsome performing aircraft. And I don't even know what that is, but that's a very pretty shapely airplane, typical of uh, Italian design. 
Oh, this is the Synchro. Yeah, we did see the Synchro here a few years ago. Very dramatic looking airplane. They had a real fancy display then. They've clearly linked up with fly synthesis now. The time I last saw it, it was just a development project. And now we come to Evector. Here's a brand we know very well, of course. Uh, the Sports Star from Evector and their Harmony. Very nicely finished aircraft, having a good success in the United States with companies called Dream Comes, Dreams Come True and AB Flight are the two representatives of these handsome airplanes in the U.S. And then, of course, we also know about the Atoll amphibian airplane. This is a mostly wood constructed airplane, uh, but it's gone through a series of finish work efforts and uh, it's looking pretty good now and should be all ready. They have a U.S. representative as well. And on the other side, yet another seaplane. This one with the engine in the front. We don't often see these. At the DTA, this is a company I know for their trikes, but they've clearly gotten into gyroplanes as well. Gyroplanes are very common here at the show. They used to be confined to one hall, not confined, but that's just where they collected. And indeed, now they are spread out all over the place. So trikes and gyroplanes from the DTA company. That's a French company. So back over there you see the Behringer company with their wheels, brakes, suspension systems and all the things that la help you land. That, that company is all over the place here at Aero, just like they are in the United States. A lot of people using their very deluxe systems. Now we come to a, a company that we don't see hardly ever in the United States. They have showed there a few times, but it doesn't seem to have found traction there, which is kind of amazing because here in Germany, this remains, after many years, the largest production company in the, in the German state. Uh, this is the Comco Icarus Company, and that's their C42 there, as you see now with the Rotax 912 IS installation in it. Uh, this company really has held their own for a long time and continually refined their products. And just to show you here, one of the bosses actually out cleaning the carpet, so that's a nice sign. This is a hard working company, clearly. Okay, one of the big producers here always has a big luxurious booth like you see here. This is JMB, and we know their VL3. This is a retractable airplane. They are really out for a high performance aircraft, and you can maybe see up there hanging from the ceiling, which they do in a lot of these booths to attract more attention because they're uh, big halls and it's hard to see everybody, but JMB has always had a very prominent spot in here. Over to the right is the uh, cool little uh, Silence aircraft. It's a little single seater that uh, has an elliptical wing on it, very interesting. And the D Motor Company has a display here too, but uh, they're featured in that particular aircraft. Uh, now we're to Grappo. We know this company as well. Folding wing aircraft tricycle gear, tail draggers. We've seen this in the United States as well. It's a modestly priced aircraft. And off to our right here we see the Duke Elise prop display. These folks have uh, really come on strong in the United States in the last few years. Been a big brand in Europe for many years. A lot of folks really like their props. Now we're coming to our one of our two sponsors this year, this is Bristel. This is the company, the BRM Aero Company from the Czech Republic. There's something you haven't seen before. Their tail dragger option with big, fat bush tires on a low-wing aircraft. You don't see that very often indeed. And Behringer tires, uh, wheels on that aircraft as well. And suspension on the uh, TDO Bristel that you saw there. Uh, Bristel Aircraft USA is actually our sponsor. This is BRM Aero, the company from the Czech Republic that produces this beautiful airplane. This is kind of a fifth generation design. In the back of the hall here, every other year, and this is being an even numbered year, we don't have too many sailplanes, but because they are so big in Europe, you're always going to see some here, even in the years that they don't include. Okay, here's the Magnus Company. We saw a big display of these aircraft over in the electric hall, I'll call it, where a lot of electric propulsion is going on. And uh, this company is producing some of the aircraft that Siemens is using. Off to our right here, we see the 
Belmont Aircraft. This is another company that I don't know about. I think I know most of these companies, and then I come to this show and I see things that I've never seen before. So that's one of the reasons why we so like this show. There's always something new and different here at Arrow, at least to our eyes. So we're trying to give you a treat as well. Another Magnus aircraft with a really distinctive paint job on it. Might be uh, decals on that, but a very unique looking aircraft. We do see some helicopters here in the hall, and that's what you're kind of looking at now. And you notice they have an unusual fitment above the rotor disc. I believe that is a parachute system. All right, here we are at Zlin. Now they've got, this is the company that produces the Outback Shock that is grabbing a lot of attention in the USA. They've got a huge, beautiful display there that shows that airplane flying. But what's new here that we've not seen before is the Shock Ultra. This is a very much lightened version of it, according to U.S. importer Bill Canino, who says that this aircraft now, instead of using the big Titan 180 horsepower, uses a Rotax 912 series engine in there. All right, as we continue to wander the big halls of Aero, we're next up is the Shark aircraft. Now, we have seen this one in the USA, finally. It took a little while to cross the big pond and get there. It's by a designer I've known for many years, Yaro Dostal, and they all get their name from having a shark-like tail fin on it. He's designed a few aircraft, and they all exhibit that same quality. Coming up next is another aircraft we know very well in the United States. We don't know every one of their aircraft well yet, and specifically that's the one coming up right now, which is the Stream. This is TL Aviation, they're calling themselves now. We know it as TL Ultralight, and that's still the name they're using in this country, but for export purposes, I guess, or perhaps a company change of pace, they're going with TL Aviation, I'm told. And here, the one that we know the very best is the Sting. This is now in its S4 iteration. Uh, one of the earliest success stories in the U.S. market was this particular airplane. They do very well here, too. And behind the Sting S4 is the TL-3000 aircraft, which is their high-wing version from this company. They're doing very well in this position here where they've always occupied right at the front of the hall. Those in the front of the hall here tend to get the most attention because it's where everybody walks by. Alpi Aviation is another company that we don't know well in the U.S., but they've been in the European market for many years, and this company has made these handsome fixed-wing aircraft. I, I don't know if they're representing this helicopter we just passed by or not, but uh, they have Alpi Aviation has several models as you see in their display here. On the right side, Pipistrelle. Of course, we know the Pipistrelle brand very well. Their Taurus motor glider in the front. You see the Alpha Trainer in the background. They're having quite a success with the Alpha Trainer. Uh, recently reported a big sale to flight schools. So, that, so that's exciting for that company. Okay. On the left here, a company I thought was gone, but I am wrong. We. We checked into them and they are still in business. The reason for my confusion is that the STEMI company, that's that very handsome motor glider, bought this company and I was under the mistaken understanding that they were going to discontinue the Remos G3 X, or GX, which is what you're seeing here, but nope, they're still good. So coming up next year is another company that we know. They were represented in the United States for a few years, and that dropped off, and it's kind of been on and off a little bit. But this is the Dynamic, or as they say in European, uh, Dynamique. Either way, this is their new model here, the D3. We've seen this before, and you might be able to tell there it's a retractable gear aircraft. That's really what they favor, although we have seen the fixed gear model as well. <laughs> Then we come to an uh, always interesting display from the B&F company, that's uh, Booker and Funk, which uh, the last name is the key there. It's Peter Funk, who is a designer of some very handsome airplanes. Over to the far left there you see is the Clubman aircraft that we saw last year for the first time with this radial engine up front. Uh, rep a reproduction of their FK9 model done with some very interesting qualities to it. and uh, the. FK-139, I believe this is, which is one of the Booker designs that they've had. 
yet another one. I don't know. It's amazing how we can walk around these halls here and see so many airplanes that I don't know, even though I've studied these things for as long as I've been in this business. Here's the Flamingo, another very handsome looking airplane. We'll have to try and learn some more about that. The country of Hungary has got a whole display here. Uh, that shows a number of different aircraft. They're all from different companies, but they're all, uh, this is a co fairly common thing like they do at the Paris Air Show where whole countries get together and exhibit uh, as a way to show off their products. These, sh these shows are relatively costly to come to, and this is a way to economize. So as you see on the right here, another seaplane. This is one we've seen before, the Odonata. Uh, it has some similarities to the Icon A5 in the U.S., but actually predated it. And so, as I said, all of these uh, different displays from the, from the country of Hungary are not all from the same company. That's why they're different kinds of aircraft as well. Okay, now coming up right in front of the camera, you see the ICP in their Ventura. This is an aircraft that they plan on making as, into a four-seater as well. Uh, but I think they're going to have a two-seat version, a similarity version. ICP has a number of aircraft that we've seen in the U.S. The Savannah is one, represented by Walter de la Nebbia uh, out of Texas. And the Vampire Viper II, this one is. Yet another one that we don't see in the USA. That's one of the reasons why we like to come to the show. You'll see stuff here that you just don't see elsewhere in the United States. And now coming up on our left in front of the camera is the Skyleader company out of the Czech Republic. We know it, we used to know it as Helavon. Here's a new one that I've seen and it's got the Continental O200 in it. That's fairly unusual in this space anymore. Rotax kind of owns the entire series of halls that we're going through. And by the way, while we continue on by the entire selection of airplanes from the Skyleader company, so far, we have gone through just three of seven halls of Aero 2018. There is literally too much for us to cover. This is going to be a longer video than we normally do anyway, but we're trying to hit as many of them as we can, and the B halls, like Bravo, are all the ones where the very light aircraft are displayed. Okay, we have only hit halls B1, 2, and 3. We are now in hall B4, but we're going to wrap it up so this video doesn't last like a Hollywood movie. But the last one we're going to show you from this hall is the Swan Company. And they have exhibited some single seaters for many years. They're clean looking little aircraft. They can, in some cases, they can meet our part 103 or the German 120 kilo class, which is almost the same weight structure. But on the end here, you see they're in uh, all black carbon fiber look. Uh, their first two-seater that I've seen from this company. So there's our first look at the halls of Aero, and of course we'll kind of end up with an American company. We don't see too many American companies here, but you know this one. This is Vans Aircraft, which this year is celebrating passing 10,000 of their kits, making it into the air. So there's our first tour of Aero 2018 in our race around form. We hope you enjoyed that little look. I'm Dan Johnson reporting from Aero, and please look at bydanjohnson.com for more coverage of all these aircraft. Thanks for joining us, and thanks to Bristol Aircraft USA and LSA Aero Marine for helping us make this possible.